All right, I finally got the block back. I wanted a really clean place to put this together. I'm a real pet peeve about that when you're putting this crankshaft in. You want to find the cleanest room you can possibly find. So, of course, that would be my kitchen. You don't want any cats, you don't want any dogs, you don't want any hair, you don't want any wind blowing around, wives, nothing. Just you and a block in a really, really clean room. That's the best way to do these. Um, you can never have a clean enough room. That's for sure. So, this is what I picked. I see some people put these together in a garage or outside with the wind blowing around. I just cringe. Yeah, these, uh, thankfully these cylinders were all within spec. And, um, I had Jake from, uh, Samson Racing resurface the deck and, uh, hone it out. He plateau honed it really good. Um, I don't like using dingle ball hones. They don't, once in a while I use them, but you want a really good plateau hone for your rings of seat really nice. And you should always, you should always resurface this too. If you're going to take this thing apart and do all this work, get the deck resurfaced. Then you, you know you're not going to run into problems with head gasket issues, which these always, always have. First thing I'm going to do is get these bearings in here. You always want to wear rubber gloves because you don't want to touch you don't want to touch the bearing with your fingers because this is Babbitt. Babbitt has embeddability. It's it's made to be that way in case you get foreign material or particles in there. Stuff will get embedded into the bearing versus scoring everything up really bad and burning everything up. But the acids in your hands can get in the bearing. So if you don't use rubber gloves, don't touch the babbit on the bearing. Just hold it on the sides and the back. Don't touch it. That's a big no-no. Um, first thing I'm going to do is plastic gauge this. I'm going to make sure all the clearances are right. Because, um, well, for one, the crankshaft was bent, the old one. So I bought a new one. That's a brand new Subaru crankshaft. I cleaned it really good with brake clean and stuff. Now the way these go in is um, the ends and the center get the grooves and these two do not. Um, you're supposed to replace these washers too. I'm not going to yet. I'm going to do it after I, after I bolt this thing down. All of these threads too you want to you lightly oil so you get the right torque reading. You want to torque these to about 14 to 22 foot-pounds for starters. And then you want to hit them again at about 37 foot-pounds. So there's an impression on here. You can probably see there on the bearing. Yeah, I'm just I'm right at a pound and a half. It's just under the max, which is what I really like because it's it's just a hair hair loose, which is nice. It'll spin good that way. It'll last a long time. I don't like this junk on my crankshaft, so I just use a little bit of brake cleaner, and it just wipes right off. I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave this stuff on the bearing side just because I don't. I don't like messing with the bearings. I don't want to touch them. I get to do the same thing with the rods. I did number them. We're facing this way. Facing that way, these tangs were up. I'm sure of that. Okay, everything's cool. It's always good insurance to check all that stuff.
I'm going to try to give you a good view of this just because in case you don't understand what I just did. Um, these little round things they squish down and um, if you look at this come on focus you damn thing there it is this is actually this is this is the loosest bearing I have and, and the max is two thousandths maximum allowable tolerance is two double o two and uh, seven anywhere from seven to two is good so right around 15 is about perfect and this is just under two thousandths so it's right at about 18 which is good I can run this without buying different bearings Now before I put this crank in, I want to make sure there's no oil left on this surface because this is all going to get gasket sealed. It's starting to come apart. I want to make sure none of that fuzz gets stuck in the block either. to just a little bit to lubricate this seal be real nice to them make sure they don't get wrecked on the threads Four of those. I got a Permatex Ultra Gray for this that's what everybody seems to be using so that's what I'm going to use. Just want a small amount. I want to try to keep these off of the bearings too. Stay like the doggy. Stay like the doggy. This is going to piss me off. Ten millimeter. That one you can just tighten by hand. You don't really need to torque it. I'm going to start by tightening all these to 14 foot pounds. I'm going to tighten all of these to 22 foot pounds. I'm going to go over them all again. Make sure I didn't forget any. Well, I want to do all the big bolts at 37. I'm just going to take a flashlight and just go all the way around and make sure that stuff is squished out all the way around. Yeah, looks looks like stuff. Now, right now, before you get too carried away, you want to center all these rods in the bore. Yeah, and you want to make sure this crankshaft turns, and it does. It's real nice and free, which is beautiful. That's 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 what you want. You want this thing to be able to move on its own like that. Now, piston pins. Before you do any assembly, you want to put these things in here. And you want to make sure. You want to make sure that they slide on their own like this. Basically, if you take if you take and shake it like this, then you know it's good. 
Okay, if, if this thing binds up when you when you shake the piston, if it binds up at all, you got to take this apart and get some emery cloth after it. Or, well, if you're a machinist, you'd actually hone it out just a hair. You know, make sure there's no rust on the on the pin, and make sure there's no burrs on the on the inside where the clips go. But yeah, that's good. That's what you want right there. Yeah, thankfully these pistons look really nice. So, didn't have to replace those. Yeah, sometimes you just work them a little bit and it just loosens up whatever's in there, making it stick. Okay, those are all good. I know these have been clean, but you want to you wanna look at the rings, the ring lands. You want to make sure there's no carbon deposits in there. I don't like ring groove cleaners. I've seen people try to use a ring groove cleaner and they start taking out metal. So if you ever if you ever see any carbon built up in here, these actually cleaned up really nice. If you ever see any carbon build up in here, what what I always do is I take one of the one of the old piston rings and I break it and I just I just stick it in here and I I just very lightly scrape the carbon out of there with a with a broken old piston ring. Yeah, these are nice and clean. Jake did a really nice job cleaning this thing up and making it nice. Okay. So, now I get to deal with piston rings. Okay, yeah, the end faces up when you put it on the piston. I want to put these in upside down. So you just squeeze it in like this. Square this one up. These are too tight. I gotta file these down. Okay, I got these uh these rings on. Um I'm going to just show you really quick. I already showed you the pin. That slides really nice. Okay, there's a there's a little notch in, in inside the ring right here. Okay, I put that in there. And then the other ring, which has no notch, I put 180 degrees off. So they're here and here. And then your oil control rings or I mean your your compression rings, the second ring I want facing forward and the first ring I want facing rearward it doesn't really matter which one goes where um, just so long as they're in line with the piston pin because this is facing front so I, I, I put one of these clips in and that should be yeah, it's facing away, which is right. So, these rings too, when you put them in, you want to make sure that they fall on their own. You want to make sure they're nice and loose. And they just do their own thing. The oil ring too. You want to make sure it's nice and, nice and smooth in there. That one will have a little bit of resistance, but not much. And these things should just fall on their own. If they're too tight, even something's going on with them, you want to clean your rings or make sure they're not bent or something. So, okay, I got these in. I'm going to pull this pin out because it's dry and I'm going to, I'm going to put a little oil on it. You don't need a lot. I can put a little bit on the pinhole. Stick a little bit on there. Put a little bit on the rod. I already did the rod. That one's already... I'm just going to put it in here and just make sure it slides in and out real easy. It should kind of fall on its own. Like that. You just need a little bit of oil, not much. Okay, I got that. 
I want to take a new towel. Put a little brake clean on the towel. Clean this cylinder again. Make sure there's no oil in it. You want it dry. I see a lot of people lubing the crap out of these and you don't. That's a no-no. I was an automotive machinist. I built crap loads of engines and uh, this is what the Automotive Engine Rebuilders Association tells you to do when you build an engine. You leave the cylinder dry, you leave the rings dry, you lightly oil that pin and the only thing you want to oil is the skirts. You leave all the rest of this completely dry that way you're you, that way you're not going to get any ring wash or anything and your your rings will break in really nice that way this thing will pump oil and splash oil all over the place real fast so you don't need to gob oil all over it like a lot of people do that's just not how you do things so uh... you can believe me or you cannot i don't really care kind of fun too you know you, you set up these rings so they're whatever way but they always move too so it, it really doesn't matter too much these are kind of cheesy they really are there now this is with the exception of this piston pin hole this is all completely dry and the cylinder is completely dry and that's what you want now I'm just going to lightly oil the skirt. That's all you need, just a little bit of oil on the skirt. You don't need to get all crazy. That's how you do it. And just tap it in real light. If you feel it stop, don't don't force it. Cuz if it stops, that means your rings aren't in there right. I just take a magnet. I can pull this connecting rod over. Try to fish this thing in here. Just like that. Okay, that's in there. I got piston number one in. Well, that I got everything in there. I'm going to show you this. If you can see, see how it's dry on the side and it's, it's just wet right where the skirt hits up here. It's dry here and here. That's fine. That's, that's how these things go together, man. You leave them dry like that because then your piston rings don't, don't wash out. They break in, they seed really nice right away. Um, that's, that's how you put it together. I've seen a lot of people put these together and they think they got to swab everything with gobs of oil and that's just not the case. You got to remember that when you run an engine, everything in the cylinder that is above the crown of your piston, all of that oil gets burned off. It's always dry. So for somebody to just get all this soaking wet and get the rings all soaking wet with oil it's just it's it's pointless and it's senseless and you can you can wash your rings out so that's all you want to do just lube the skirt just to make sure when it when you when you first do the first initial startup you want to make sure that the skirt is lubricated and that's it